you know, on the QA side of things, a team is formed and they, you know, they have kind of difficulties connecting, you know, with the developers. They're kind of in this mindset of like, well, they don't like us, we don't like them. Um, and it does go both ways, I've noticed, you know, both so from the yeah. QA side, that folks will be like, oh, developers treat us really badly, you know, or, or, yeah. but then also they'll be like, oh, stupid devs did this, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, it has to be like empathy from both sides um, and yeah. collaboration. Um, but then, you know, those teams often are kind of junior folks. Um, they're often hired by non-technical people um, yeah. and maybe don't have a strong skill set in product development, you know, which yeah. is really if you're building a test framework for the purpose of achieving a goal, you know, of having people adopt a certain practice, that's this really is a product that you're making, you know, and you can you need to understand yeah. your market and when the put things out and iterate and test with the market. Um, yes. So I think that like the, it's just, I've seen again and again, this pattern of, um, you know, a team is formed and they think their job is to write a test framework. It's yes. like, that is not your job, right? That, yes. As a side effect of your job, you might write a test framework, but yeah. you know, your job is to achieve this this outcome. Um, yes. So I think it's, it, it's just often, um, I, yeah, often I've seen that happen. Yeah, yeah, I, I, absolutely. And, and um I, I've realised in in recent years that I, that I, you know, an awful lot of of my it's a grandiose term, but philosophy of development is about trying to establish and maintain that really strong outcome focus, because it's the goal that matters, and how we get there matters less. So so everything else is our techniques that help us achieve the goal, but it's the goal that's the target. And, and whatever you need to do to achieve that is ultimately the game. And, yeah. and for and, and me also, at I guess least, I, oh sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, for me at least, I think that's that's really what we mean when we talk about working in an agile way. We, we're willing yeah. to change the way that we're working to suit the conditions. Absolutely, yeah. I'm a I'm a big fan of like kind of core, you know, like lean agile as yeah, yeah. as originally intended, you know, rather than like yeah. you know, what people think agile is now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I guess I also just wanted to caveat um, what I said about the kind of that product focus. There's also, you know, I'm not trying to blame the, the, the people involved, right? Like they find themselves in a system that, yeah. that influences how they behave. And, and and a lot of what I do as the consultant these days is try to coach organizations to structure themselves to allow the teams the visibility and the ownership to be able to make their own choices. Because mm -hmm. that's what works. It's it, you know, you, you compartmentalize it. You you try and do it by command and control and micromanagement. It just doesn't work very well. Yeah, and I, I it's maybe controversial, but <laughs> I, um, I think it wouldn't. It's not unreasonable to say that there might be a difference in um, teams ability to be successful in that style with like geographically where they are, you know, so like what I've found is, you know, teams like in the UK and Sweden say are often considerably more amenable to that kind of, you know, collaborative, you know, kind of let's work together on a thing than perhaps, you know, North American teams. Um, so I, don't, I don't know if you've encountered anything like that. Uh, I, I, I think there's certainly something about organizational cultural differences um, and there's certainly a facet of organ, uh, American organizations that's kind of command and control and bureaucratic but but I think I think we have enough of that in in, in UK teams and, and sure. European teams as well um, yeah, and, yeah. and there's enough creativity and it, it seems to, it seems to me Looking at the teams over the years that I would point to and admire their, their output, one of the famous really high high productivity teams uh, in my early days anyway was, was Borland, who were famous for the quality of their software and their tools and so on uh, at the time. And that was a small focused team who really engineering led, really focused on their product and, and the ownership in the development team. And I don't think that changes very much. I think that's nearly all what, when, when you look, you know, the, the Macintosh team, you know, that built, that designed and built the Macintosh and all of the software, they were very similar. It, it's, it's that ownership of the product and that, that, that big picture view that you were talking about, the, the, the outcome focus. Do you think that's that quite, just, a, quite a yeah. difficult thing to establish. And, and it's very, very easy. It's quite fragile. So it's very easy to break it with the wrong organizational 
culture or structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you think that it kind of touches, it was related to potentially, you know, organizations that are maybe more engineering led than kind of business led? I think I think there are different kind of failure modes in those. And I think there's, mm. so I, I'm, I am a, a technical person and so probably have a greater affinity with engineering led organizations. I think that ultimately what is successful is is the kind of partnership that I think that both of us have been talking about throughout our conversation today is that you can if you look there's a great presentation from 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 Gregor Hope where he talks about different styles of development and he, he kind of one of the things that he characterizes with with it, it is is what's the reporting line for software development so if your reporting line is to the CFO then you're always seen as a cost center and they're always trying to, you know, their, 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 their model is outsourcing and trying to cut costs and all that kind of thing. If it's this, the COO, that's a different line of reporting and de delivery. And what you get to in modern high performing organizations is that your reporting line as the IT function is to the CEO because it's a collaboration. It's you're absolutely front and center a part of the business. Uh, I was talking to one of the banks, the, CT, the senior CTO of uh, one of the uh, banks that was a big adopter of continuous delivery a few years ago. And he said that the CEO said that the next CEO of the bank would be a software engineer. Because it's that, you know, it's, it's that important. It's, mm -hmm. and yeah, maybe may a Boeing analogy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 so I, I think as engineers, we, we, we can tend to fail by, by you know, chasing after um, castles in the sky and beautiful designs too far and so on. So we've got to keep that outcome focus, including the economic constraints under which we're operating, which I think was something that you touched on earlier. Yeah. That's got to be part of the picture too. But, but I, I think the, 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 often, often the more common commercial-led failing is a very naive view of what's cost-effective. And building crap fast isn't what's cost-effective. Mm -hmm. Building high-quality software yeah. is, is the cheaper, faster route. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Well, I guess kind of coming back to like the, the system that people find themselves in, which is kind of where I was going with like the yeah. kind of geographical comparison is yeah. that, you know, it seems like at a certain point, uh, you know, often these things will start with, you know, someone who's passionate about improving, right? Yes. And then and often they'll, they'll maybe get the opportunity, uh, you know, to do something great and they'll, they'll do a talk about it. And then, you know, kind of, Maybe, maybe and eventually maybe it kind of comes up against someone who's saying like you spent how many developer hours doing yes. this where's what, what value did that produce um, yeah. which is and it's like of course it of course it produced value but maybe at the kind of higher levels of this one of the very important skills is being able to articulate that value and like really yes. um uh, make it a business value this clip was taken from my podcast the engineering room with dave farley a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.